Hello everyone, Josh here with Dygetic Audio, and if you're streaming with OBS, this information will get you better audio from any microphone. OBS, or Open Broadcast Software, is a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. Because OBS is free, it's often the first stop for streamers, podcasters, and even possibly you. So let's talk about setting up some basic EQ and compression in OBS Studio. Let's open OBS and create a new source. I'll call this one Fi Fine Mic, but you can call it whatever you'd like. Select your input device and click OK. The next step would be to right click on the audio mixer and go to the advanced audio properties to turn on audio monitoring. This will allow you to listen to the changes in real time. Just remember to turn it off before you start your live stream. In the drop down to the right, you have three options, monitor off, monitor only, and monitor and output. The default is monitor off. Monitor only will let you hear the input and will not output the audio to your stream and monitor and output will both let you hear it monitored and output it to your stream at the same time. Close the window and select the audio source we created earlier. There are two ways to get to the filters panel. Either right click the input source and select the filters or after selecting the input source, click on the filters option directly above the source. In the filters panel, we're gonna use an EQ effect first. Now, OBS does not natively have an EQ built in, but you can get a free plugin pack from Reaper from the link in the description. You apply the effects by clicking the plus sign at the bottom or right clicking and adding from the options. To add an equalizer, select the VST plugin and name it EQ to see what it is easily. Next, in the drop down, select your EQ. For Reaper, it's labeled REAQ standalone. To manipulate this effect, click the open and interface, and here's the interface for the parametric equalizer. I recommend a high pass at 110 hertz, a band between 150 and 300 hertz, a band between 800 and 1000 hertz, and a band between 5000 and 10,000 hertz to help with sibilance. You can easily adjust these settings by clicking and dragging the dots, manually entering the numbers, or clicking and dragging the sliders. These settings are not set in stone. Play around with them to find the right sound for both your voice and your microphone. Quickly turn the effect on and off by clicking the eye in the audio filters panel. Once this effect is set, we're gonna apply a compressor. Again, right click and add a compressor from the list. There are five settings that you can manipulate. The ratio sets how much compression there will be. The higher the ratio, the more compression. For example, for a five to one ratio, for every five decibels above the threshold, the compressor will output one decibel. This will flatten the dynamic range and allow you to get louder overall audio signal outputted to your stream. The threshold sets the level at where the compressor will begin. Set this somewhere around negative 24 decibels. The attack will be how fast the compression will be applied once the input passes the threshold set. This will be 10 milliseconds. The release is how long the compression will be held once the input falls below the threshold. This should be set at 100 milliseconds. Finally, the output gain is the level after compression is applied. We will come back to this just a little later. The last effect that I'd like to use would be a limiter at negative three decibels. Add this to the list of effects and set the threshold by either sliding the bar or manually entering the number. Once this is applied, it will prevent you from ever clipping the output audio. Go back to the compressor and increase the output gain until the peaks of the audio input are falling just below the threshold that you set on your limiter. You can monitor this at the audio mixer panel at the bottom. For me, the output gain needed an increase of 10 decibels. Don't forget to turn off the monitoring if you don't want to hear yourself during your stream. You can also copy and paste filters by right-clicking on the source and selecting Copy Filters. These three effects will give you a good professional sounding live stream, but without the ability to listen to them on studio monitors, you may not be able to tell if it sounds good. Check this video out to see where I review a set of affordable studio monitors that have been amazing to edit audio on.